but uh, as you can see, clouds across the frame, object clearly behind the clouds. Okay, so what, what does that mean? That means uh, the, the first thing I need to do is eliminate c camera artifacts, lensing, ghosting, other weird stuff that happens with optics. Um, so I'm 100% sure this is not a lens flare. This is not at all visible in the viewfinder. This object here is not visible in the viewfinder. Uh, a typical uh, lens flare is visible, and I can control where it goes. Also, a, a lens flare would appear over the clouds, not in the dimension behind the clouds. Um, so this is just as good as you know putting your finger up. Actually, it's better because I mean the clouds are actually in the environment. Uh, so you can see the dimension here. So that that rules out a flare. Okay, that rules out a flare. Flare does not appear behind the cloud structure. So uh, it could be ghosting. It could be some other type of camera artifact. Th this camera has a 300 millimeter Nikkor lens with a uh, with a 1.5 teleconverter on it. Now that teleconverter can introduce interesting artifacts so uh, after this session here that you're looking at I went out yesterday and uh, that session I had removed the uh, teleconverter uh, but still got the same results the objects there uh, so that rules out the teleconverter introducing any type of artifact but anyway let me go through uh, and proceed with uh, the findings here as you can see uh, nicely behind the clouds, probably an orbital. Orbital. Let me go back to this guy. Uh, uh, was that the one? Let me see. Maybe not. Uh, anyway, there, there's kind of an interesting, almost facial feature that begins to show up on, on some of these. It's almost like a smiley face, uh, for lack of a better description. And that's been very consistent uh, throughout my uh, my photography. So here it is again, a little bit of a different filter. Clouds clearly in front of the object. And you got that reddish uh, gaseous or iron oxide environment as some people describe it around the object. Here it is again, behind the clouds. And I'll just rifle through these. There's a nice one behind the clouds here. Source above it here. So I'm not getting the detail I would like to see. On the uh, on the target object here. Uh, so what I did yesterday is I went to uh, ISO. I dropped this down to 100, um, and I had removed the uh, the teleconverter. Um, unfortunately, at 100 ISO, that forced me to drop the f-stop down to let's say 7.5, which was a mistake because uh, that higher f-stop turns out to give me the uh, obviously depth of field and, and uh, quite a bit more detail uh, that I'm looking for. So, but I'll uh, I'll pause this presentation so I can load up uh, yesterday's shots and uh, and show you what those results were. But uh, anyway, these uh, these were clear. Uh, and again, here's here's what the camera sees. Now, this if you look hard enough, you can see the object here. The sun would be out of just out of frame above here. I mean, let's see, uh, let me see if I have some settings in the, that I can quickly paste in here. Okay, that's pretty dark. Let's see if I can up the exposure. Yeah, yeah it pops right out.
but again, at uh, 400 ISO, I'm not quite seeing the uh, the detail I'd like to see on this. So uh, I'm going to continue to work at uh, ISO 100. Uh, keep the f-stop high and drop uh, the shutter rate uh, to uh, you know, reach proper exposure. I think uh, probably, I'm guessing, the shutter rate is, is less critical than the ISO and the uh, f-stop. So if you have a 35 millimeter digital, and I'd recommend at least a, uh, you could probably get away with a, a 200 millimeter, but you know, 300 or above would be nice with a tripod, of course. Uh, then those would be the recommended settings, ISO uh, 100, highest f-stop you could use, and uh, go ahead and drop the, uh, the shutter speed down and uh, see what results you get. I haven't tried it yet. It's my intention to get out there and give it a go today. Mm. So let me keep uh, let me keep rifling through again here. You can see it's, uh, you know, the reds come out on top where, of course, the sunlight would be, so that would be the heat source. That would make sense. And then you got... Uh, it's kind of a reddish cloud above it. Um, and let me go ahead and paste the uh, settings in there and see what this guy comes up with. Pretty dark. Up the exposure a bit. There you go. And, you know, if I were to do all the photos, this is that's where you... That's where you begin to see the moons pop in, pop out. They're there, they're not, which would be indicative of it rotating around the back of the object. Um, paste here, so we get pretty high. I'll keep going. Tried some different mother filters. Um, grab this guy real quick and paste him. Settings, paste, so exposure uh, pops up pretty nice there. I'm trying to find one where the uh, where the moon is actually the moons are actually visible. This, this may be an orbital up here because it's been showing up. This is kind of interesting here, this one. This is at the... Kind of facial feature, almost looks like a smiley face. I think what we're seeing on here is you have um, a quadrant here, a quadrant here, one up here, and one up here. They're fairly symmetrical. And then at times you can have bands coming across here and maybe a center line. And that's why I want to drop that ISO down to see if I could begin to bring out uh, some of the some of the other detail in this object. Uh, let's see. I don't really want to play with it now because it takes uh, takes a little too much doing. But you can see you see what I'm talking about here. You almost have a smiley face and nose. And uh, it's uh, it's ever changing. This object or objects, uh, you get a different look. Each and every time, it's uh, really something. And let me keep rifling through here. Different filter. Get some orbitals here and here now. Orbital here, up there. Maybe one in front, hard to tell. This down here, I believe, I believe that is a, uh, a camera aberration there. That's uh, it's a lens anomaly.
And I think at the uh, ISO uh, 100, uh, I, I think I'll better be able to capture uh, some of the travelers uh, with the uh, X object here, uh, because there is there's definitely uh, more than one uh, sizable object out there. You don't always catch them, but they're uh, they're there every now and then. They'll pop into frame. Pay some settings into this guy, see what we get. Sometimes we got some black and it helps, but other times it's just. 